Mr. Speaker, I, there are times in politics we say doors are open and people walk in, and I think today is indeed a classical day for this. Um, the Prime Minister presented, and of course I'll leave my most formal part of my presentation for later, a simple and regular um, process of providing support to ordinary St. Lucians with getting the Christmas barrels. And I listened to the former Prime Minister and Leader of Opposition speak. And while I listen, Mr. Speaker, I will challenge the Prime Minister to come up with a special legislation for speaking on truths and passing legislation to arrest people for such. But I will tell you something, Mr. Speaker. He made reference, the former Prime, the former Prime Minister made reference to the fact that the two and a half percent for health and security is hurting the people. But the Prime Minister on record, on record, spoke to, and he referred to a while ago that it wasn't about the levy and security, it was about health insurance. And I heard on a talk, on some public statement that they were they would provide to every St. Lucian health insurance. Oh, he's nodding his head. In agreement with what I'm saying. I'm happy because when we come in this house, we always speak the truth. And he's nodding his, his head in acknowledgement of the truth. He would provide every St. Lucian, every St. Lucian, with approximately three quarters of a million worth of Health insurance, there about, I heard $750,000 or there about, whatever it is. Oh, $75,000 worth of health insurance every year. But I happened to do my investigation and I found out that there is a premium the government would have had to pay to secure health insurance for every solution. Of course, yes. Yes, yes, that was it. Because you do not get insurance for free. Because it was a free lunch? It was a free lunch. Yeah. So every year the government would have had to pay a premium. And who owns the company? I'm not getting into that oh. yet. But the premium is more than what the two and a half percent is being collected. Over fifty million dollars annually. Yeah. And intended to come to this house to raise through the same Security means that we raised it yes. to pay the premium annually. Yes. You don't see, you, you could say what you want now. As a matter of fact, in the statement by the former prime minister, he indicated that we must bite the bullet. His exact words. Now you're talking. We must bite the bullets. Now you're talking. What's the meaning of bite? And the I had to investigate what's, what's the, mean? the meaning of bite, bite the bullets. What's the meaning of bite? The bite the bullet is when you're about to do something that is unpleasant. When you have to do something that is difficult, okay. when you have to do something that is bitter, oh, we that. Okay, okay. a bitter medicine mm -hmm. to provide health insurance. But while he was about to provide health insurance, the hospital was incomplete. <laughs> Therefore, he had to export and import medical services over from somewhere else. Yes. I had somebody called on Cayman City. Yes. So St. Lucians would have and I'm coming to the health insurance thing because I, am I, 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 was, I had a bout of medical problems and I had to go to the medical insurance and I'll tell you what this former prime minister had in plans for St. Lucians. They we would not have a hospital. No, they would give it to Cayman City. They would give it, they would import all services mm -hmm. and they would give every St. Lucian health insurance. Yes, because some people already have health insurance, so they will discount them. But in the calculations, and I have a copy of it, ah, today, first time I heard the former Prime Minister right Minister, please. Member of Kashmir please. How are you, Minister? You could there is a, yeah. again, the member from Miku South. Yeah, the member is misleading the House, Mr. Speaker. Okay. I have, I have, zero, I have zero difficulty if, if, if the member wants to have a discussion, and maybe that would be something that we can do in a subcommittee. But the reality is, Mr. Speaker, his interpretation of what he was doing is grossly inadequate and inaccurate, okay? 
There was never an attempt to have Cayman Health City run the entire hospital. Cayman Health City was going to provide professional services to train our staff to run our basic hospital, and they were going to run an international hospital of services that we are not currently providing. And the way that the insurance works, Mr. Speaker, is yes, government would make a contribution to the premiums for the persons, the mothers who are unemployed, for the unemployed in St. Lucia, for the poorest of the poor. We would be, government would pay that part. But everybody else who had a job, Mr. Mr. Speaker, would pay, like NIC, 50-50. And if the, if the business house chose to pay more, so be it. But that would raise over $80 million a year to be able to fund the operations of the hospital. <laughs> okay. Mr. Speaker, but the Prime Minister said it. 80,000 people at $1,000 is $80 million. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Member for Cash Street Office, please proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. So the former Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister had intentions, had intentions to come to this house. The Prime Minister had intentions to come to this honorable house to raise a levy to, uh, to, to pay for medical insurance. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, yes, Mr. Speaker. So when I calculated the figure, and I and I spoke with the individual who prepared the proposal for the then government, and I asked because I did some loss adjusting, and I work with Najiko. I. Yes, I've done some, some loss adjusting. Mr. Speaker can bear me witness on this. And I understand what it is to work with insurance companies. I did a lot of work after Hurricane Maria in Dominica. So yes, there was a proposal to provide insurance to the country. And that insurance would have saved, would have been the pill for everybody to have access to health care. And there was a certain amount to be paid annually. But when I heard this, I took it and I listened. But there was a statement I went back to that the prime, then prime minister made in the parliament when he introduced it. And it is that statement, Mr. Speaker, that is important in the house today. That people of St. Lucia, we must bite the bullet. Why would you tell St. Lucians that they must bite the bullet? Why? At what time do you use that phrase that you must bite the bullet? Mr. Speaker, I did not rely on my own knowledge of what the meaning is. I consulted Google and it reminded me of certain terms and I said, yes, that's where I am. The unpleasantness of a decision. How difficult the decision is. Bradley, you've been quiet all the time. I think you should remain that way. You understand, not because lowly me speaking that member you should for Castries of East, you understand. please do not refer to the member. The member for me could so thank you very much. You understand. But I'm saying that this was the difficulty that would be upon St. Lucians. But now we did not tell the former Prime Minister did not tell St. Lucians they must bite the bullet. He engaged them in open discussion about the 2.5 percent levy. But notice, when the former prime minister would embark upon health insurance for St. Lucians, there was no hospital in place, none. It means that the services would have to be imported. If you need a brain surgery, you would, they would find you a place. When you are in a situation where you have purchased health insurance in that form you are exposed and you are vulnerable because you need to buy services in accordance to what your value is mr speaker i try to imagine they would have to get the cheapest hospital because if you have already concluded it's seventy five thousand dollars that's in the basket and you need services costing from a hospital hundred and fifty thousand dollars you would not get it so they would need to go and shop around 
and God knows what would have ended up with St. Lucians. But what's yet, Mr. Speaker? I have an issue they're battling with an insurance company. When they tell you that the amount that you must pay is as high as Mount Everest, but you must contribute 20%, which is equivalent to Mount Jimmy, that you cannot climb. I know you do not understand that because you do not know poverty in this country. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a strange hearing. You understand? But I will tell you, you have, oh yes I do. Oh yes I do. Oh yes I do. Oh yes I do. Let me tell you something about poverty. Let me tell you something about poverty and that you have not lived, Mr. Mm -hmm. Former Prime Minister. My mom used to wash clothes for a living. And I used to carry the clothes on my head from a two black mallet to my mother's home. And while I am carrying the clothes, the dirty clothes on my head, the blanket would start to untie and cover my face and I would smell the stench of the people, dirty clothes. And I have not lost the smell in my nostrils up to there today, up to day. I can tell you the smell of small but it never leaves you. Know that, hearing of it, it doesn't leave you. I know it up to today. That's why I know you. I do not know you by your name. I do not know you by your conduct. I know you by experience because I've experienced you from the time of a child. People like you do not understand and will never understand. Oh yes, I do know about you. And that is why I'm saying to you this morning, that is why I'm saying to you this morning. Oh yes, well I, I, I probably do not know, but I know some things. Well, let me tell you, I know some things. And I will tell you this morning. Oh, well, proceed. Uh, oh, yes. You know everything about everybody. Yes. So I will tell you this morning that because of the situation of poverty, because of the situation of, of difficulties in these countries, because of what we have to do, the former, the Minister of Health had to approach, had to approach universal health care in the manner that he did that we do not lose our hospital while we provide a basket of goods for persons that when they go to an insurance company they will not deny them because right now i have a hospital bill before an insurance company and the percentage they're willing to pay the difference is difficult do you know what it cost one day in the hospital in matnik and you're making noise about hospitals, hospitals, hospitals. I did sp spend some time in the ICU at hospital, but I did not just rely on my health care. I decided to engage doctors and thank God for the doctors who engaged me. And I asked them questions. And I asked, what is the cost of running your hospital? Oh my God, I was shocked. The cost of running the Matnik Hospital is equivalent to the same size of our national budget. One, six hundred million euros a year of which 60% goes directly to staff so when you go to Matnik for health care the bill will be high but how do you ask a government whose national budget is equivalent to the operations of Matnik hospital to do what Matnik is doing and how do you get there how do you get there Oh, you do it for insurance. To give one man or one company the entire health of St. Lucians in one business deal? In one business deal? When you have not invested a cent in your hospital, you let the, the, the central hospital stay behind for three years. No hospital. But you're going to go and buy insurance for all St. Lucians? And the broker, I heard, the broker who would be processing the claims yes. for persons who get sick was from inside. Oh yeah. Because the business look well. Mm -hmm. You don't know about that? Mm -hmm. No, well, when you do your proposals, you must ask all the questions. Yes. No, and I see it, wasn't it? I see. No, I'll not respond to you. Yes. So I'm telling you, yes. when you speak. When you speak about health care and about a 2.5% levy, do not discuss it in those terms. Because this is an honorable, it's a positive, it's a progressive 
method of providing health care that provides security for the citizens of St. Lucia. It is incremental, but it is the best way. Insurance companies have fine lines. You know, they tell me they're not paying for that medicine. They tell me they're not paying for that surgery. They tell me they're not paying for this professional because it's not allowed in, the, in what I, I, I agreed with them. So today, when they agree to pay 70%, I have to come up with $45,000 thereabout. How does the ordinary St. Lucians who buy healthcare via an insurance company, which is your approach to solution of healthcare in this country, resolve these issues? How? Are you telling me the poor will not get heart attack? Are you telling me the poor of St. Lucians will not require brain surgery? How? How will they do that? But I understand that is a lazy way when election is approaching. It's a lazy way. But the progressive, developmental, cautious way, as we put in the basket, medical support for pregnant, prenatal, and postnatal care, we are able to test it. We are able to see how it works and perfect it. And then we will put the cancers, and then we will put other, e other medical issues as we develop our hospitals internally to provide health for our people. And this is like what my great-grandmother and my grandmother and my mother did. For those of you who have not experienced poverty, on a Sunday morning, when things rough at home, before my mother sends me down the road, she would say, Kitemawe kisa kila puchuit. She doesn't say anyone buy food before she investigates what ingredients are in the house. You understand? And sometimes it is critical enough to mix some flour, mm -hmm. take some lentils, mm -hmm. add some green flour, and make a healthy food. And you didn't have to go and buy something in the shop right. because Monday you need exercise and That's pencils. This is a developing country approach. This is. But you are the same prime minister, same prime minister, former prime minister, same former prime minister. And I'll speak some other time again. Who said that you went to a school? You went to a school and the teachers told you that the school toilets are not in order. Oh, yeah. You don't leave that for another day. Night saying it. I go in there. Six, six, six. And you said the toilets are not in order. But am I not the one who fixed the toilet last week? You said the teacher, the principal of the school, Call the parents of the children and tell them if they're not coming to fix the school, close it. No school. You forget that. You forget that. You forget. You forget. Close the school. You My God, I listen to this clip over and over and over and over again. He cannot remember. And I ask myself, what kind of leader who tells a principal of a school that if the children are not coming? If the children's parents are not coming to fix the toilets in the school, that shut it down. Shut it down. Yes. I said, wow. You know what I thought of? And thank God, there was investigation in my education. The domestic toilets you're put in schools are not children friendly. <laughs> and Wasco also do not have water all times in the school, so the children are always trying to get it to flush. Hmm. You would not blame Wasco. You will not blame the fact that you or we sometimes invest money unwisely for schools. Because toilet for schools are over $3,000 3, per one. They are smaller. They are colored. They are more friendly designed for children. But you put domesticated toilets in a school and you say you must punish the children. Because the schools... The children have it, there's some toilets and problem. A leader doesn't say that. A leader doesn't say such a thing. Insensitivity, and you come here and you tell me that you care about poor people. 
My deceased son, I bought one keyboard, he damaged it. I bought the second one, he damaged it. I bought the most expensive one and he became an accomplished keyboard player before he died. Yes. I believe in investing in children because they are the heritage of the Lord and they are the future of St. Lucia. That's what we believe in. Not to punish them because they made an error. Or you do not know what it is to have children and maybe and make them make errors. Maybe you do not know that. I don't know. I'm asking. So when you stand here today, and I listen to so much of what has been said, and today, today I said I would not say anything. But honestly, I've heard it enough. I've heard enough. No, today is my first day. Today is my first day. No, 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 you have not heard me yet, sir. You have not heard me yet. I can tell you have not heard me yet. But I'll tell you, a lot of what is being said by you, had it been to a St. Lucian who carries a different accent, it would not have been registered in the way that it is registered. Because St. Lucians love your accent. I like to hear this. There's a sing-song story about when people who are different to us speak. It reminds me of the buoy of life, where you put the carrot, the meat, and the thing. So in Guyana, they call it the... There's a name in Guyana, they call it mix. You understand? In, they call it the... the, 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 the some bouillon type. That's what it is. No. Because we are accustomed having all different persons in our population who speak and we relate to. You understand? So I'm telling you, while I listen, but I'm telling you, you get away with too many. Too many things. And today, I'm setting the record straight. Enough is enough. Come good, come straight. And there's room for that kind of opposition. But if you're going to continue to mislead this country, we will speak out and we can tell St. Lucians exactly where it is. Your approach and asking St. Lucians for war because of the two-point levy is deceiving and regressing progression. If you com campaign on this, you could never govern on this. So be real with St. Lucians because we have a real people, a real country to move forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.